I'm officially three months post-op from my skin removal, abdominoplasty, also known as an extended tummy tuck, and muscle repair surgery. I needed this surgery after losing 120 pounds five years ago through diet changes only uh, and was left with some excess skin. In this video, I want to give you a brief recap of my surgery and recovery and then mainly talk about how I'm doing now, what's been happening in the last few months, if I have any regrets, uh, and overall how I'm feeling. Before we get started, I want to let you know that this video is sponsored by Element. Element is an electrolyte drink mix that's perfectly formulated for people who are on a low-carb, keto, or carnivore diet. The people who created this understand that we want a really good ratio of sodium, potassium, and magnesium in our electrolytes and no sugar. I don't want my electrolytes to have sugar as the number one ingredient. And so that's what Element strives to provide is something that's gonna keep you hydrated uh, and not give you all the carb crash later. All their flavors are sweetened with stevia and contain no artificial junk or fillers. Element has a deal for all my subscribers where you can get this sample pack containing all eight of their flavors for free with any purchase. If you go to the link down below, you can go to drinkelement.com slash laurasfat. Thanks to Element for sponsoring this video. A lot of the criticism that you get when you are left with loose skin after weight loss is that you lost the weight too fast. You should have tried fasting. You should have tried dry brushing. You should have used other methods to get rid of your loose skin. And for me, that was not going anywhere. Even before I hit puberty, I always had a belly roll. Like it's just genetic where I carried my weight. And then through pregnancy, after pregnancy, and then through gaining and losing and carrying all of this weight in my belly, the weight that I had, uh, even after losing it, was all left in my belly with all of this skin. And no amount of fasting that I did was going to get rid of it. I ended up trying to do so much fasting that I got to a too low of a weight for me and my hormones were not doing well because I was fasting too much in order to try to lose this skin and I just wasn't in a healthy place. And so once I got myself back to a healthy weight, I knew that the only way that my loose skin was gonna go away was with surgery. The other thing that couldn't be repaired through time and fasting and just waiting is the diastasis recti, which is the separation of the ab muscles, and that also needed to be repaired uh, with surgery. I debated for a long time not having the surgery and just living with excess skin, and that's something I probably could have come to terms with over time, but in reality, like I just wanted to feel good in my own clothes. I wanted to get dressed in the morning and not have this agonizing decision over hiding my stomach or how things fit. I really just wanted to feel like a normal person in my own clothes, and I wanted my body to reflect all the work that I put into it to get healthy. When choosing a surgeon, there were several factors that were really important to me that I considered in making my decision. The first and most important for me was that they were board certified in plastic surgery. You can be a plastic surgeon and perform these elective surgeries if you are a board certified doctor, but not necessarily board certified in plastic surgery. You can have somebody who's a dermatologist who's performing tummy tucks. And so I wanted to make sure that the person who was performing my surgery was board certified in plastic surgery. Another factor that I considered was how frequently do they do this procedure of a tummy tuck? I went to go see a, a surgeon and he was very well recommended. He had a great price, he was board certified, but in looking at his procedures, he mainly focused on breasts the majority of the time. Uh, and he wasn't doing tummy tucks or this type of procedure very often. And I really shied away from him because I'm sure he had done them a lot over the course of his career, but it is not a procedure that he was used to doing on a day in and day out basis. And I wanted somebody who was like very comfortable with this type of procedure. Cost was a factor for me. I had been quoted everything from $10,000 all the way up to $37,000. And a lot of it just depended on their specialties, if they had their own surgery center, uh, which tends to be a little bit more expensive. For my liposuction to my flanks, um, my tummy tuck, my muscle repair, and everything at a surgery facility, and with an overnight stay, I paid $20,000 for my surgery. And the question I get asked a lot with this is, does insurance cover any of it? And I personally don't know anybody uh, who has had skin removal, post weight loss, surgery, or even the muscle repair uh, approved to be covered by their 
insurance. Sometimes if you have a hernia, uh, they can include that as well. But anytime that they start doing the tummy tuck portion, that is not going to be included, unfortunately, with your insurance. So I had to pay for that all out of pocket. The surgery itself was not a fun experience. Um, it was a very long recovery. I still feel like I'm recovering to some extent, but it wasn't as bad as I thought it was gonna be, if that makes sense. I think I had just got myself so prepared for it being the worst thing that's ever happened that uh, I it really wasn't as bad as I thought it was gonna be. Uh, I did not have C-sections when I had my children, so I really can't compare it to that, but I do know that the muscle repair that happens with this type of surgery is pretty extensive, and most people talk about that being the longest part of the recovery, which is true for me as well. I have a full video which takes you through in detail my surgery and then the first few weeks of my recovery and shows you a lot more behind the scenes from that. YouTube unfortunately has decided that that is not fit for people um, unless they're over 18 and has restricted that. So if you are logged into your YouTube account, you can go watch that video uh, and see a lot more in depth behind the scenes from that surgery and recovery. In general, I will say though, I my biggest regret from the surgery is that I just didn't take more time off work. I did have a flexible job, thankfully, and I worked from home, but I took three days off of work after my surgery, which is pretty insane. And I would never recommend anybody do this without taking at least a couple of weeks off. Um, I was off of pain medications after four days, mainly because I had to go back to work and I couldn't function and type all day long unless I was off of those medications. So based on your job, it will likely determine how quickly you can go back to work. I think as far as like standing full time in an office, it would have been at least a month and I would say even more like six weeks before I personally would have felt comfortable. Overall, I think there are some pretty key milestones that you hit after you have a tummy tuck. The first one is gonna be about four days out when the pain really starts to take a shift. You're able to start weaning yourself off of the pain meds. You actually can walk, move around, go to the bathroom for the first time. That's really the first big milestone where you feel like the worst of everything is behind you. I think then again at two weeks, I had drains in. They took one out at one week post-op and the other came out at two weeks post-op. And I felt an entire weight lifted off of me when I finally got that second drain out. And that I felt like a new person at that point. Uh, around the two week mark was when I went to the grocery store for the first time and started venturing out of the house slightly but really nothing more than a, an hour or two at a time before I was pretty wiped out. Four weeks, I think I finally felt like I was standing up straight. Uh, when you have that muscle repair, you're hunched over, and so it wasn't for me until the four week mark that I felt like I was really standing up straight. I know some people say it takes a few days, but it was a good four weeks before I could do that. And then it wasn't again until six weeks when I felt like I could stand up, I could stretch, and I could really start having my full range of motion back uh, around the six week mark. I've heard a lot of people say that when you're six weeks post-op, you feel 80% better, and then to go from 80% to 100% is about six months. And I feel like that is so true for me, where at the six week mark, I really feel like I finally started to feel better. I started traveling actually when I was at five weeks post-op. Um, I wasn't able to lift my suitcase. I wasn't able to really sit up straight for an extended period of time, but I didn't regret going on that trip and felt like I could still function and for the most part, enjoy myself. Um, around eight weeks, I feel like I started really getting back into normal activity. My energy levels sustained it at eight weeks uh, and I felt like I really wasn't getting as swollen. I wore full compression, medical compression for the first six weeks. And then really probably through week seven and eight, I wore compression 24 seven just because I was traveling up until the eight week mark from six to eight weeks. Now that I'm three months post-op, I am wearing compression. I would say half the time I have ditched all of my full medical compression and I just wear more of a compression tank top. Um, where I feel like it's just giving me a little bit more support without it, especially if I'm moving around a lot during the day, if I'm lifting things, then everything just feels a little weak and I'm a little, uh, want the extra support. I'm sure I hear a lot of people talking about there's like a mental block with feeling like you need something protecting you and holding you in a little bit. I am still at three months post-op experiencing a little bit of swelling, which is very normal. Um, all my incisions had been closed from just several weeks out and any of the major swelling that I had has gone down. But by the end of the day, I'm still feeling puffy. I like sleeping in this tank top, just gives me a little bit of reinforcement. Um, and I'm continuing to wean myself down from compression over time. 
I slept in my recliner for the first four weeks and then from four to eight weeks, I slept propped up with pillows. It wasn't until two months out when I was finally able to sleep on my side again, I was able to stop propping myself up with pillows. I still at three months post-op can't quite sleep on my stomach. Uh, it's pretty uncomfortable there or roll in certain directions just because of the stretching, but I was finally able to start sleeping more normally and on my side at eight weeks. I still do wake up in the mornings and your body starts to like naturally stretch. And it wasn't until like 10 weeks when my body would start to stretch and then like my muscles would yank me back tight again and I would feel a lot of pain uh, in my muscle repair as I tried to stretch out. At 12 weeks now, I really don't notice that anymore. I think between that 10 and 12 week mark is the first time that I was able to stop crying out in pain if I were to sneeze or cough. If you've ever had this done, you know that a sneeze or a cough, like your life flashes before your eyes. And so right around the 10 or 12 week mark, I feel like that finally uh, started to get better. And today I sneezed and like didn't even think anything about it. So I definitely know that healing has come a long way. Um, I'm traveling right now, obviously I'm in a hotel. This trip is the first time that I've been able to lift my suitcase on my own as a carry-on and like put it in the overhead as I get on the plane. Up until now, I've been checking my bag or getting help, having people help me lift it. Uh, and so I've been doing like a squat. I'm pretty careful about how I lift it, but I'm not feeling stressed or that I'm gonna damage something in my muscle repair lifting my suitcase. It's probably like too heavy to be lifting or working out with this weight, but I'm doing okay just throwing my suitcase up in the overhead and then getting it back down by myself. Around the eight week mark, I started going back to the sauna, which I love. The fear of going to the sauna too early is fear of bacteria. If you have any open incisions or open spots, you could get a lot of sweat and bacteria in there. And so I've been going to the sauna. It's really helped with swelling and just, I enjoy a good sweat, it makes me feel good. And so I've been doing that now for the last few weeks. And then recently I also started going back to the tanning bed, which I love. It's good vitamin D for me in the winter. I love feeling tan. My plan though is to keep my scars covered for the first year. If you are exposing your scars to sun or you're taking them to the tanning bed, then they can end up being darker permanently and I don't wanna do that. So I have some like really odd tan lines right now around my scar because I am trying to keep it covered, especially on my belly button. Like uh, everything's healed really nicely, but I have some like funny looking tan lines around them because I don't want to uh, tan those or burn those scar areas and then have them end up being permanently darker. I'm using the silicone tape for scar therapy. I t Every time I take a shower, I alternate either wearing scar tape or not. And so I'm using the reusable one. I just got it from Amazon. I'll link the one down below. The only times that I really notice things for my surgery is if my pants are really tight. I finally only in the last week or two have started wearing jeans or pants that are a little tighter. I feel like I still, from a size perspective, could squeeze into tighter pants, but from a tenderness perspective, I still have that back here on my back flanks where the liposuction was. I don't notice it unless I'm like right now pushing on it. Uh, I get a little tender. I'm still kind of waiting to see what my permanent long-term size is. I am surprised actually. I thought my pant size was gonna go down quite a bit and it might once I can kind of like suck it in and squeeze into a little bit smaller pants. But in reality, all my clothes just fit better. Like I'm wearing this, I have the same size waist that I did before. Everything's just flat underneath of it, which is all that I've ever wanted is just to be able to like do a front tuck or have some joggers and not worry about having everything be like nice and baggy to cover up my stomach roll. Overall, I have absolutely no regrets. It was worth every single penny of the thousands of people that I've talked to from making this YouTube video and Instagram and just talking about my journey day to day. I don't, I have not had anybody reach out to me and say that they regret this procedure. Most people say that like we had to save, we had to work really hard to be able to afford the surgery, but it was the best thing that I've ever done. Uh, and I fully stand by that. The only regret, if you can even call it a regret, is I wish it would have worked out for me to take more time off of work. Obviously on the other side of it, everything worked out fine. It didn't hold me back back in any way. It was just a very emotionally and physically draining month uh, trying to be able to do that. I was able to maintain my carnivore diet, which I do think contributed a lot to my healing, just eating so much protein. Uh, I still did some intermittent fasting. Once I hit the 
eight week mark, I started incorporating a little bit of fasting again, and that helped a lot reducing inflammation. So I, you know, now once or twice a month, I'll do a 48 hour fast and that just like helps reduce swelling. And I think is helping my body continue to heal. I did not incorporate that fasting until I was really through the biggest chunk of that healing process because my body needed the fuel. Uh, I needed lots of protein. I'm back to my normal eating window. I'm eating twice a day with then some occasional fasts, but overall, I feel like I am like this close to being 100% healed uh, and I can't wait for that to happen. So I wish you the best of luck in your journey and your decision process. Uh, let me know if you have any other questions that I can answer. Check out that other video for a more in-depth of my actual surgery and the recovery and then also like all of the stuff that I ended up using for my recovery. Thanks guys.